right, guys. So first off, so glad you're joining us today. Just so glad you guys are here. Uh, sadly, we are concluding our series uh, that, that we've been calling. Say it with me. One, two, three. Cancel. All right. So the series called Cancel. We've been talking about the past four weeks. We talked about how cancel culture is real, right? How we talked about how people are canceling people out because of their differences, because of their politics, because of their race, because of their beliefs. And many times we want to cancel them out because, oh, I can't love you because you're different. I can't love you because you support this. I can't love you because you did this. And therefore, I can't trust you. I had to cancel you out. I do not like you. I hate you. And, and last and then week one, if we, or, uh, we talked about how we are to love people who aren't like you, right? We use Jesus as the example, right? We talked about how Jesus didn't go to a person and say, oh, you're different, therefore I can't handle you, I can't deal with you, I'm going to push you away and cancel you out. No, Jesus went on and loved that person. We talked about the, uh, the Samaritan woman, right? We talked about how the, Is the, the, people of the, how the people of Israel and the Samaritans, they hated each other, were so different, but yet Jesus demonstrated, regardless of who your race and your culture, I still love you, I still care for you. And we talked about how we should love people who aren't like you in week two. We talked about to love people who are in need, right? We talked about the idea that Jesus went beyond and he provided. And we talked about the woman who was, had internal bleeding, right? How Jesus didn't go, how dare you, you didn't, you didn't need it, I, I didn't give you that authority. No, Jesus went beyond that and he said, you know, your faith has healed you, I still love you. And then we talked about how it may not be resources or financially we can give those a need, but we can also give our time. We can give our energy. We can give our quality time. We can give, hey, a simple text. Like, hey, man, let's, I'm caring for you. And we give what they need, what people need, and we are to help those in need. It may not be just money. It may be like, hey, I need a friend. Hey, I need someone. Maybe it's, hey, I can, um, I'll do homework with you. Hey, I'll have lunch with you. Or, hey, man, how about I buy you a, a, a lunch, buy you dinner? You know, simple as that. You know, and we help people in need. And last week was a big one. We talked about that we are to love people, love the people you envy, right? We had a big one last week, right? We talked about how many of us are jealous and we're envious because this, uh, this, my friend has a set of rules that they're so cool. I can, I can agree with those, but my parents have the opposite rules and I do not like them for that. I'm jealous of them because they have those rules and I don't. Or, hey, they have so much money, they have riches, they have the best clothes, and I don't, and I envy them. And, and we talked about how, we talked about David and Saul, right? If you, remember, if, you, if you missed that last week, please check out that video. And last week we talked about how Saul was jealous of David, right? Remember the song? Uh, and the scripture we read that, oh, uh, the women were singing, Saul killed thousands, but David killed tens of thousands. And it sounded like David was getting more credit then Saul, and Saul was envious, and he wanted David what? He wanted him dead. He wanted to beat him, destroy him, kill him, get him out of the picture. And, and so we, are, and we talked about how Jesus said that we are to, the greatest commandment, right, to love God, and we are to love your neighbor more than you love yourself, regardless of, regardless of what, uh, what they believe in, regardless of, uh, regardless of what they have and you don't. We are to love them the way Jesus loves them. And so now, sadly, we are concluding our series today. And we're going to be talking about a very, very big, big topic today. But before we get there, let me ask you this question, guys. Which, give me some famous people that you follow. Maybe on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok. Show me your hands. So give me some people you follow. Go ahead. Dwayne Johnson. What, what do you like about Dwayne Johnson? Great actor. Great actor. Okay. What do you follow on Instagram, Facebook? Instagram? Anyone else? Who do you follow? Who is he? Uh, a, singer. a singer. Does he have a good head or was, was it was a big best song or? Uh, pretty hard. Pretty hard. Okay. Anyone else? Kevin Who do? You, what's that? Kevin Hart. Kevin Hart. Oh, he's funny. All right. All right. Now let me ask you this question: Do you follow uh, any uh, celebrities or famous people who you quote unquote hate follow? And here's what I mean by that. What I mean is someone you follow because they always make you cringe. Who do you follow? What? <laughs> the Kardashians? Okay. Who else? I mean, this is my friend. They're not celebrities. I don't follow people I don't like. Okay, but do you. Uh, so, uh, anyone else? Uh, do you have a Wyatt? 
No? Ireland, no? No? Okay. Okay, so here's what I want to do. So if I don't, for me, uh, I'll, I'll give one. For me, um, it's always, um, who was it? Um, I don't know who it was, but like they always, for some reason, every time I look at the tweets, I'm like, oh, like, why would you do that? Like, why would you say that? And, you know, and like, and sometimes, I'll, I'll be honest with you, sometimes whenever Disney, like, supports those, like, all the, like, LGBT, uh, like, uh, like, parade and all that, that makes, and they go, please do this, please support, love is this. I'm like, oh, like, I like you, but I don't, I don't like you at the same time. And, like, I have that, that love-hate, you know, kind of thing towards them. But here's, here's what I want to do, guys. Let's have a celebrity youth group draft. So here's what, I, here's what we're going to do. I'm going to put a couple, in just a minute, I'm going to put a couple of pictures up there. And what I want you to do is when I point at them, I want you to see if you will love them in our youth group or you like cancel them out like, hey, you're not part of our youth group. Sounds good? All right, let's start with the first one, okay? Let's first one. The Guardians of the Galaxy. Yay! All right. I will love Groot. Maybe baby group for Guardians of the Galaxy. All right. So, yes, keep, want them on our youth group? Yes. Okay. All right. So, Guardians of the Youth. No, why? Why not? Oh, yes. Okay. Okay. Uh, let's go to the next one. How about, how about Sid from Toy Story? Really? Yes. You really you want him on our YouTube? Okay. I thought. Okay. Wait, wait, oh, 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 shh. Karen, Karen, you have something? Ah, okay. Listen, listen. It is possible. Mm -hmm. It's absolutely possible. Okay. So, so we don't, so we, okay, I'm surprised because maybe for some people like, oh man, he's, he's, he steals toys. Like, I'm like, he's a weirdo. Like, but no, like, okay, I, I'm surprised by that. Okay. How about the next one? How about the next one? How about the cast from Stranger Things? Oh, no. No? no? Oh, seen you never seen it? Yes, Samantha? Uh, yes. Like yes. No. Why not? Why not? Why don't you like, no, you don't like them? Why not? Okay. I All right. I feel like you were expecting a very different reaction to that. Okay. I'm surprised. Okay. Okay. I'm very surprised. Okay. How about the next one? Let's go to the next one. Next one is... How about Scar? Scar from... No? Oh, wait. No. No? You don't want him? No. He's me? I know. He killed Mufasa. Right? He does us. That's true, but... Okay. All right. <coughs> All right. Okay. The last one. Last one. Do you want this person in our youth group? Here we go. Yes! Baby Yoda. Baby Yoda. All right. So Baby Yoda. Okay. Okay. All right. So 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 just for a moment. So okay. Of course, you know. In case you need more proof that people tend to have strong opinions about celebrities, all you need to do is check the comment section of any famous person, you know, social media posts, you know, along with comments from the fans, and you nearly always see jokes, name calling, arguments, and hate it. I don't know if you watch like, Jimmy Kimmel, like they do like, the mean tweets. I don't know if you've seen those or not. And so like, for me, I'm like, man, those are straight up mean. Like, and, like I, I think those are like very cruel, but but you see, but you see, shh, here, just remember, so you see every week it seems like there's a quote-unquote villain of the week, right? There's a villain of the week trend online, yet another famous person, politician, or organization everyone loves to hate, either for someone silly or because they said something hurtful or offensive. Um, do you know who this is? Who's that? It's Chris Pratt. Chris Pratt is a very, you know, known actor, right? We see him in Guardians of the Galaxy. We see him in, um, in Onworld. We see him in uh, other other movies. But, shh, but if you if you just hear me out, but recently he uh, he was in a movie called Onward, and and it was a good movie and all that. But um, what he did was he posted this is what he posted on uh, social media. He posted this on his Instagram. And he said, I'm gonna read it to you. He says, with all that's going on in the world. 
It is more important that ev that, than ever that you vote. Just as any celebrity, they will tell you every day, several times a day to vote. But me, I will tell you exactly who to vote for. Hashtag onward. The heroes before us did not spill their blood only to have their sacrifices wasted by your apathy. Empathy. Uh, the upcoming 2020 People's Choice Awards is the most consequential vote in history of mankind. Times a million infinity. Vote for onward for family movie of the year or else you will die. No hyperbole. Click the link in my bio. Let your voice be heard. Now, many of us, you think, that's, a, that's not a bad post. Like, you know, like he's, he's trying to promote his movie, right? But and, and like the, 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 the night he posted, he had over 200,000 in one day posts of how it was, how, how dare you, Chris Pratt, you're talking about voting. You're the most hated person. I, think, I bet you voted for Trump. I bet he did this. And they hated him for it. And literally, one person just posted this. Uh, he just put, someone just wrote, Chris Pratt is the worst. And it, it was just that, you're the worst. We hate you. You stink. Why would you tell us to vote? And like, oh, you probably voted for this. And he was actually also, if you don't know him, he also has good character. He, some say he is a, is a believer. Some say that he does good. And many would say, oh, but he, but he support, he's, he's anti-LGBT. Oh, but he supports Trump. Oh, we hate you because you, you like Trump. And literally, they canceled him out. Because of just his post. And, they, and, literally, and literally thousands of thousands of people were just hating on him. And he literally, as of as right now, he is the most hated person right now. The worst Chris. The worst Chris right now. So, you know, like we talked about in the first week, right, of this series, social media has led to a phenomenon called, remember, cancel what? Cancel culture, right? A big jumble of online behavior like calling out, shaming, boycotting, and holding people accountable for their actions. It happens when people troll and start online feuds for fun. People fuel celebrity drama with hashtags like hashtag Chris is over party, you know, or whatever is over party. Some people use social media to embarrass or hurt uh, each other for a laugh or for maybe for revenge. Um, and other people call out or cancel others for legitimate reasons, especially public figures who said or did say something very harmful. Samantha, got something? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. And we see it everywhere. There's, there's feuds. There's drama. There's people. Uh, oh, uh, they're talking about the, like, hey, speak up or my, here's my voice be heard. And it was about sharing and having a good time. But yet we're making it as a as a stand to like, hey, we hate you. And it's terrible. It's awful. And but today, when I, today, I don't want to talk about Internet trolls or celebrity drama. I want to talk about what happens when we have legitimate reasons to cancel someone. So whether it's online, in our families, or in our circle of friends, there, <coughs> excuse me, there's never a shortage of people we love to hate. Especially when we feed, when we feel there's a good reason for this hatred. Oh, like I don't like you, I hate you. When someone hurts us, it's tempting to cancel them out, right? By loving to hate them, talking poorly about them, dehumanizing them, taking, uh, uh, taking revenge on them. Uh, when I was uh, a, a Zephyr staffer at Camp Zephyr, I was uh, working at a, uh, cleaning up some, MC, uh, some hotel rooms that we call them MCC conference rooms. So we were uh, cleaning up. And then I, all I said was to a first year staffer, I just told this person, I said, hey, do you mind doing this? And out of the blue, this person just snaps at me and literally calls me every living word you can imagine, a foul language, tells me that I'm worthless, tells me I'm nothing, I'm, no, I'm, just, uh, I'm just, you know, a nobody, I'm just, I, don't ex I shouldn't exist. And then this person went on to say that you're not going to find love. No one's going to marry you because you're dumb. Because, oh, how can a, how can a girl fall in love with this, this trash? Like, it was really bad. And all I, and I, in my well-being, I just wanted to, ugh. But, but, but the Holy Spirit, but the Holy Spirit was what was really just pulling my soul, pulling my spirit, and was telling me to just say, okay, and went on my way. 
And it was, and, and, and that stuck with me because I really wanted to hurt this person. I really want to say something bad about this. And I'll say, oh yeah, well, no, I could, I could have. I could have, right? But, but, sh you know, but, the, but what good would that do? What good? Uh, yeah, if I, if I ever did that, yeah, it would have been good, but at what cost? Now I'm just as bad as they are. And so, you know, this is, it can be complicated. When we hurt, of course, we want to stick up for ourselves, right? And hold people accountable for their actions. But God also calls us to forgive and show grace rather than seeking revenge. So question, guys, how do we balance accountability with grace and forgiveness? Does forgive, forgiving someone uh, mean pretending like, like a hurt, the hurt never happened? When do we need to, what's that? Like, when do we need to seek justice? And when do we need to just let something go? So we're going to look at a story. We're going to be in 1 Samuel 24, and we're going to be reading verses 1 through 7. But before we read, let's pray really quick. Let's pray. Father God, I pray that as we close up the series, I pray that your word today will be clearly communicated, that Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, will be highly exalted, and that these students are beautifully blessed. It is your name, Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. So, we're going to be in 1 Samuel chapter 24. We're going to be in verses 1 through 7. And as we get the verses, just a moment. So last week we heard the story of David and King Saul, right? Remember last week, right? David and King Saul? Yes, you remember from last week? So David and King Saul. And, and, and we're focusing mostly on Saul, right? This week we're going to look at the same story, but focus on David. So let's recap. Uh, so let's, in case you need to recap, here's what happened. Saul was the king of Israel, right? But David had been chosen by God to be the next king, right? Because Saul was disobedient, right? He did things he shouldn't have done, and God said, you're, gonna be, you're no longer going to be king. David's going to be the next king. So Saul, at, at the beginning, Saul liked David, right? Because David whoop, whoop, defeated Bigfoot, right? Defeated Goliath, right? And, and then, and then and the Philistines retreated. They were defeated, right? But, but Saul liked David, but at a, he eventually became incredibly envious of David, right? Because of that song. It was on iTunes, uh, Bible iTunes back then. Saul killed thousands, but David killed ten thousand. It was a big hit. And Saul didn't like that hit, right? What you got? Well, they were, they were, they were acknowledging uh, both of them because they both did a, they defeated they were at a war. They were at war. So they made it a big deal because, because if you're a king, you wanted the most credit. So, and, and, and anyone wants credit. And so the, the women were, the, women, the people were singing were like, oh yeah, Saul killed thousands, but David, tens of thousands, and the Philistine, right? Because they were fighting in that battle. And Saul didn't like that. He didn't like that and became envious of David. Because of his envy, Saul tried to kill David repeatedly, right? He had a what in his hand? A spear. He had a spear in his hand, right? And the Bible said that the evil spirit went into, God allowed an evil spirit to be in Saul, and Saul would what? I try to kill David. What the? Right? <laughs> you know, he even rallied his army soldiers to help hunt David, right? But not until David's BFF, right? Jonathan, the bromance, right? And Jonathan warned David, my dad's going to kill you, man. You better run. My dad don't like you. He better run, you know. So we can all agree that David had a valid reason to hate Saul, right? You're, dude, you're trying to kill me, right? It would have been totally reasonable for David to want revenge. But let's look at the story, and here's what happened instead. Okay, let's look at 1 Samuel 24 and verse 1. When Saul returned from pursuing the Philistines, he was told, David is in the wilderness near En Gedi. So Saul took 3,000 of Israel's fit young men and went to look for David and his men in front of the rocks of the wild goats. When Saul came to the sheep pens along the road, a cave was there, and he went in to relieve himself. He went to the bathroom. Weird. David and his men were staying in the recesses of the cave. So they told him, so David's men, this is what they're telling him, they told him, Look, this is the day the Lord told you about. I will hand your enemy over to you 
so you can do to him whatever you desire. Then David got up. Now, understand this. Hear me out. Imagine dying. Like, the king died. How did he die? He died on the toilet. <laughs> like, like, how embarrassing would that be? Right? Dying in the toilet. Right? Dying by going to the restroom. And now, the men are like, dude, this is, a, not only is this embarrassing, but this is even worse when you, like, ah, take him out. This is your chance, bro. Take him out. Like, you have every right. Like, they're basically telling him, you have every right to kill him. He's been trying to kill you for days, bro. You're on the road, dude. So, yeah, take your chance. And so they're telling him that. But here, check this out. But it says, then David got up and secretly cut off the corner of Saul's robe. Let's keep you reading. Afterwards, David's conscience bothered him because he had to cut off the corner of Saul's robe. He said, now, and here's why. He said, this is what was bothering him. He says, verse 6, I swear before the Lord, I would never do such a thing to my Lord, the Lord's anointed. I will never lift my hand against him, since he is the Lord's anointed. With these words, David persuaded his men, and he did not let them rise up against Saul. That's crazy to me. So basically, and this is Andrew's terms, Andrew's way of saying it. All, what David told his men, it was bothering him, he said, God chose him, therefore, I ain't going to kill him. That's all his reason was. He, he says, that's God chose him to be king, I made an oath to not lay a hand on him, and that's what I'm going to do. And the men are like, what? Dude, look what he, he took you away from his wife, your wife. He, you had to leave your home. You had to like run for your life. And like his men were trying to persuade him because that's what it says here. David persuaded his men because his men were going to what? They were going to kill him. But David persuaded his men and he didn't let them rise against Saul. So, so when David had the opportunity to take revenge and let hate guide him, he chose to let Saul go instead. Because you see, in this moment, David chose to love Saul in spite of his actions. Now, that doesn't mean suddenly he's, uh, David suddenly liked Saul or wanted to be his best friend, but David showed love instead of hate by showing mercy to Saul instead of revenge. Like we mentioned last week, David and Saul didn't exactly reconcile. The best they could do was promise to what? Stay away from each other. And they did. For the rest of their lives, they never saw each other again. So keep in mind, the story we're reading is from a different time and culture. It's about two powerful men and not people like you and me who definitely don't rule nations or command armies. This is also the story of two adults, not teenagers. So before we go any further, let me make a few things clear. The moral of the story is not this, okay? It is not to be nice to someone who is abusive or dangerous. It's not, about, it's, not, it's not to ask for help when you're in danger. It's not to seek justice when someone has harmed you. If you're in a position now or you've been in the past where, uh, where, some, where, where someone, especially an adult, is harming you or harming someone else, Please tell one of the adults in this room that you trust. If it's myself, Miss Karen, and, or my, my, my Vicky, or Pastor Keith, we, we, uh, any adult, we want to address it. We want to make sure that there's nothing going wrong. You want to you uh, kind of comment on that? You want to kind of like... Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, so please, if you're in any of those situations, please let us know. It will be confidential, but we want you to be as safe as possible. Okay? So, now, God doesn't tell us to put ourselves in harm's way or endure abuse or violence. It doesn't honor God when you allow yourself to be hurt or mistreated. Because you see, God loves you, sees you, and has put the adults in this room in your life to help protect you. 
So please tell us and we will help you. Okay, is that cool? Yes, please. If, do not hide anything from us. We want to help you. We want to be beside you. Okay. So now let's look at a verse that Jesus says in Matthew 5. We're going to be in verses 38 <coughs> through 45. So if that's not a lesson we should take from this story, why is? What, what, what is? What is the lesson? Like we said last week, it's helpful when we read the Old Testament stories to look ahead to the words of Jesus. Let's look at what Jesus had to say about this. Okay? Let's read Matthew chapter 5, verses 38 and 45. This is what Jesus says. Jesus says, You have heard that it was said, an eye for an eye and tooth for a tooth. But I tell you, don't resist an evildoer. On the contrary, if anyone slaps you on your right cheek, turn the other to him also. As for the one who wants to sue you, and take away your shirt. Let him have your coat as well. Next verse. And if anyone forces you to go one mile, go with him too. Give the one who asks you, and don't turn away from the one who wants to borrow from you. You have heard that it was said, love your, en love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I tell you, love your enemy and pray for those who persecute you so that you may be children of your Father in heaven. For he causes his Son to rise on the evil and the good and sends rain on the righteous and the, righteous and the unrighteous. So, so as, he, as he often did, Jesus flipped the script of the world's wisdom about love and hate. Instead of telling his audience to love those who love them and hate those who hate them, Jesus challenges you and I to try something new. He said to love our enemies. Let's go to the previous verse. He says, he says if someone is, uh, so uh, specifically I want to look at if someone tells you to uh, walk a mile. So back in the, in the Bible period, the Romans overpowered the people of Israel. So it was a mandatory requirement if a Roman soldier was carrying his armor, if he saw any Israelite, they would, they would point him out and say, hey, carry my armor for a mile. And you had to do it or bad things would happen to you. So, so they would have, and they hated it. And so Jesus here is telling them, he says, if, if, if someone tells you to walk a mile, you go another mile. And, 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 and the people were like, what is he saying? What does that mean? Because... Because if you read the beginning, Jesus says, you, you, it was said to you. It was, you, you uh, uh, so go, go back to the previous word, please. It says, you have heard that it was said. You know what that means? That means that they had the law too. So Jesus says, you guys, this is what was told to you. You have heard that it was said to an eye for an eye, two for, two for a tooth. Says, it may, meaning you get back, you know, you, if someone gets you, you what? You get back at them. But Jesus changes it around. He says, but I tell you. He says, no, if someone does something to you, if someone slaps you on your right cheek, turn the other cheek. If someone sues you and wants to take away your shirt, give him your jacket. And then he goes and beyond. If someone tells you to walk a mile, walk two miles. And then he goes even further. He says, you have heard it said to love God and hate your enemy. He says, no, do, the op do more than that. Love your enemy. Although David, go back to David, David lived many years before Jesus spoke these words. But David understood God wouldn't want him to return Saul's hatred with more hatred. His decision was to show love to Saul instead of vengeance. Instead of vengeance points to Jesus' challenge for us to do. And this is the bottom line. The bottom line is this. We are to love the people. Slide please, slide please. We are to love the people we want to hate. We are to love the people we want to hate. So let's talk about this phrase. Look at the, the phrase, turn the other cheek, because, because it's often misunderstood. So when Jesus said this, he didn't mean never stand up for yourself or others. Let people walk all over you. No, no. Jesus had no, he had no problem 
with verbally defending himself, especially against the Pharisees. He even called them brutal vipers. He even called them fools. Like he, he, like he. No, but he, but uh, no, he did everything. He did was righteous. He did like when he went on the rampage in the in the temple, flipping tables. He didn't. He didn't hurt anybody. He just said. He basically said, "This house is for prayer. You turn it into a marketplace for thieves." And it, and and and, maybe, and he didn't hurt anybody. But, however, Jesus often got angry at people who were cruel and hurtful. But Jesus never sought revenge or was cruel to others or escalated a conflict because his pride, because his pride was wounded. Jesus went to the heart. He didn't go like, oh, what would you say to me, bro? Take, take that back. No, he literally went to the heart and he, he confronted that with love. So here's what I think Jesus did to me when he said, Turn the other cheek. So hear me out. When someone attacks, hurts, or lashes out on you, don't be overcome by anger. Don't plot your revenge. Don't escalate the situation. Don't react without thinking. Respond wisely instead. And I'm going to tell you a secret. A secret about Jesus. Many people think Jesus only as a kind, gentle, peace-loving man. But Jesus was also revolutionary. Je you see, Jesus both upset religious and political people, political leaders of his day. They all wanted him dead because they were like, oh, he's from the devil. Oh, why is he speaking this way? Oh, this, he, he should be dead. He should be executed. Oh, yeah, he upset both sides. But you see, Jesus' enemies would often try to provoke or trap him so that they could have an execution to arrest him. But Jesus knew better. So can I get two volunteers to come up here? Wyatt, come along. And I like, come along. Come on, come over here. All right, I want you to go come over here. Okay? And when I point at you, you're going to do exactly what I say. Okay? So come over here. Come over here. Okay? So imagine for a moment, what that you're angry with someone. You're angry at Ireland. Now, pretend, pretend you punch Ireland, you punch Ireland in the face. Looking for a fight. Like, you punch Ireland in the fight. Now, but then something strange happens. Ireland doesn't hit back. Instead, they take a, she takes a breath, raises her, raises her hands, looks you straight in the eyes, and turns their head, giving you the perfect shot to punch them again. Now, 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 ah, here's what I hope you would do in this moment. Stop and consider what you have done. Realize you can't hit them again because you're clearly... You clearly become the bad guy. Calm down. Be guilty, ashamed of what you did, and walk away. Go on and get back down. So you see, that's the power of love over hate. I know it was silly, but literally that's the whole point. The power of love and hate and self-control instead of revenge. You see, we want to react in anger or seek revenge. We escalate conflicts which makes it more difficult for the person who has hurt us to come to terms with what they did. After all, if you punch them back, they'll have a reason, what? To hit you again. And might even think their first punch was justified. But you see, when Jesus said, turn the other cheek, he wasn't telling us to just get over it. He was telling us, to strategically choose love instead of hatred because love changes everything, changes things. So in, I want you to reflect for a moment. Who are your enemies? Who are you tempted to hate because of what they, what, of the way they've hurt or treated you? Who have you, you hurt? out of a desire for revenge and how you can make it right. <clears throat> how can you stop the back and forth exchange of hatred and retaliation? How can you strategically choose love to someone you want to hate? You see, when someone hurts us, it's, nat it's natural to want to cancel them and make them pay. But it's possible to hold someone accountable for their actions without adding to the hatred in the world. You see guys, the world needs 
The world needs us to model a new way forward, the way of love, not hate. It will be challenging, yes, easier said than done, right? But the most important, but most important things are, this change can start. It can start with us when we decide these these things. Number one, to forgive. Forgiveness isn't something we do for the person who hurt us. It's something we do for ourselves and God. Whether they ask for our forgiveness or not, we can choose to let go of bitterness towards the people who have hurt us. You may not be ready to fully forgive that person today, and that's okay. Forgiveness is often a journey, and that takes time, and yes, but it's easier said than done to forgive. And if you struggle with forgiveness, believe me, it is very difficult, especially, oh, how can I forgive someone who did this thing to me? This, I, I feel so hurt by it. And forgiveness is a journey. And we will help, as adults here, we will love to help you and pray with you. Number two, notice. We all need people to model for us what compassion and love look like. But the good news is, is that these examples are everywhere. We just have to pay attention. So we got forgive, notice, defend. We've talked a lot about what to do when we've been hurt. But don't forget the other people are, the, the, don't forget that other people are being hurt, hurt all the time. You might notice someone being bullied at school or you might be, uh, begin to explore deep and systemic um, systemic problems like injustice, racism, <coughs> excuse me, and equality. And if you were David, being hunted, hunted by the king, you would have wanted someone to defend you, right? Yeah, I want someone to defend me. Um, what can well, what, well, we can do that for others? Stand up for them who can't defend themselves. To 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 back them up to encourage them, to link arms with them. And lastly, to pray. The things we've talked about today are difficult. Yes. Yes, it is. If we want to choose love instead of hate, we're going to need a lot of help. We have a lot. We have to learn to pray for those who hurt us or who are hurting us, just like Jesus did. Because you know, I'm reminded of this reminded me when Jesus was on the cross and the people were taunting him. They were, save yourself. Save yourself. You call call Elijah to come down. Come, save yourself. Oh, he's trying to call, you know, Abraham, trying to call. He's trying to, you know, speak. Taunting him and teasing him, bullying him, hanging him on the cross. And Jesus didn't retaliate whatsoever. Instead, the most powerful words Jesus said on the cross, he said, Father, forgive them. For they do not know what they're doing. We may, when we memorize, we may memorize that, yeah, oh yeah, Father, forgive them. No, but at the, that moment, Jesus said, in a moment of desperation, now understand the moment he was alone, because God was a, a turn his away. Because Jesus was about to take the sins of the world. And while this is going on, Jesus said, Father, forgive them. And that is so powerful. So powerful. For Jesus to model forgiveness. You know, it's hard to hate someone you consistently pray, pray you're consistently praying for. And as we close, I want to challenge you. To pray for the person you're most tempted to hate right now. Ask God to help you choose love instead of revenge. You see, if we choose to hate our enemies, hate will only grow. But if we choose to love our enemies with God's help, that love will grow spread and even change our culture it's not going to be easy guys easier said than done right it is not it's going to be a challenge but i promise you it is worth it like jesus said and like david did 
God challenges you and I to love the people you want to hate. And see how it changes you, changes them, and changes the world. I know it's not easy. And, and, and we're ending on a note where it's, it's after all we talked about these past four weeks, love the people who aren't like you. Love the people who are in need. Love the people you envy. And now we are to all together love the people you want to hate. And, and for in your being, like you understand, I want, they deserve nothing but hatred. You know what? They deserve justice. They deserve th that. Why should I forgive them? They did this to me. They, they did this to me. Why should I, why, why do I have to forgive them? I, I can't let this go. I promise you, if you don't forgive, it's going to eat you alive. But Jesus says, he, He's wet with you. And we have wise counsel here that will help you, give you the strength, give you eyes to see that Jesus forgives them. And if Jesus loves and forgives them, you have to forgive them as well. It may be hard. And it may take time, but that's okay because Jesus will never leave you. And he will always be right with you. When you do feel tempted to, oh, I just want this person gone. Oh, I'm so envious of that person. Oh, I just hate that person for, for saying that. And we've all done it. It's all on social media. It's all over. If right now, in the politics right now, oh, uh, we don't want Trump to be the president. Oh, we don't want Biden, we want Biden to be the president. There's so much hate going on on both sides. But if we as a church, if we as a ministry, as just a youth, if we can be, live transformed and love like Jesus does, I promise you, we can change the city of Somerset. But it takes for us to love the way Jesus does. So we're going to close with this. We're going to, there's going to be a song in just a moment. There's going to be a song playing. The song is called For the One. For the one, and I want you to uh, carefully read the lyrics. If you know the song, sing it along. But I want you, for a moment, I want you to just reflect on the song, and I want you to see how God can change your life, how loving Him can make you live a transformed life. And now, for those of you who do not know Jesus, Lord and Savior, tonight can be an opportunity where, hey. I want to receive Jesus. Jesus gives me hope. That sounds awesome the way Jesus loves. I want that love. And if that's you, talk to me. Talk to Vicky. Talk to Miss Karen. We will love today to pray for you and receive Jesus today. Because when you receive Jesus, I promise your life will be transformed dramatically. You will see the world differently. You will love the world differently. You will face the world differently because Jesus is right beside you. And if, and if you want to receive Jesus today, if you want to receive hope, if you want to receive, you want to receive life to the fullest, where Jesus says, you know, to the, to the woman at the, at, the, at the well, he says that if you have me, the living water, you will have me forever. I want to love you. I want you. I want, he's pursuing you. But you have to let go of, of this world. Let go of your wants and your desires and cling on to Jesus. And for those who struggle with forgiveness, who struggle with, oh, I, 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 I want to forgive, but I can't. And if you need prayer, I'm going to be in the back. Miss Karen will be in the back. My, uh, my wife will be in the back. If you need to seek prayer, hey, I, 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 how, I, how hard to forgive? Pray for me that I can forgive. Hey, I have a buddy or I, have, I, I, I know so-and-so that I, that I need to forgive this person. I, I, need, I need prayer to give me the courage to forgive. And if you need prayer, any type of prayer, whether it's to forgive, or maybe just, hey, I'm having a rough day, can you pray for me? We will love to pray for you. But don't leave this today. Don't leave just like, ah, yeah, just a sermon. Ah, it's just, a, yeah, whatever. No, we want to see you transformed. Father God, we thank you, Lord, for this wonderful series. We thank you, Lord, for the opportunity for us to understand that we as a culture cannot cancel people out because of race, because of religion, because of, of someone who, who supports or 
even agrees with homosexuality or LGBT or anything beyond that, Father. We are to be, not to cancel those people out, but we are to love them like you do. We are to fully see them as yours. Fully understand that we need to understand how to love, how to forgive like you do. I pray that they would, maybe if they forgot a point or maybe they, they need to watch this series again, I pray that these students can share with their friends about this series. How they can receive love, how they can receive grace through Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you that our bottom line is that we are to love those who aren't like us. That we are to love those who are in need. We are to love those we envy. And we are to love those we want to hate. Because hate is a powerful word. It's a powerful thing. But love overcomes that hate. A love beyond measure. A love, an unconditional love, overcomes hate. So Father, help us in our daily walk with you to love like you do to forgive like you do and to show grace and kindness to those who don't deserve it the way we didn't deserve your love and grace so father i pray this blessing upon these students and those watching this video that would you, that you would bless them and keep them make your face shine upon them be gracious to them May your favor and countenance be upon them and may you display to them each and every day your complete, perfect peace. And it's your name, Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen.